Welcome everybody. This is ISIS, the International Solar Energy Society. We are happy to present to you today's Solar Energy Journal Virtual Award Ceremony. Please hold the line and we will begin shortly. Welcome everybody. Please hold the line. All right, welcome everybody. I think we are good to go. This is the team at the ICE headquarters in Freiburg in Germany. And it's my pleasure to hand over to the moderator of our session for today, Professor Victoria Martin, member of the ICE board for a few welcoming words. Okay. So hello everyone and welcome to the uh, presentation of the best paper award and associate editor of the year award um, related to our solar energy. My name is Victoria Martin and I'm professor in energy technology from Sweden. And today I'm here uh, to moderate this session. Uh, I'm a, an active researcher myself in renewable and sustainable energy systems, and I'm also part of the board of that. Uh, yes, so a little bit about ISIS first, who we are. Uh, ISIS is, uh, has members from both individuals and corporate members from over 110 countries. Uh, it was founded in 1954 and has been a a UN accredited NGO since 1992. Uh, ISIS works to advocate uh, renewable energy and sustainable energy solutions and um, has a passion for sharing scientifically based knowledge advancements where we organize conferences and webinars and so on. Uh, so uh, if you're not already a member of ISIS, I think you should think of joining us in this endeavor of reaching 100% renewable energy for all. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a scientific uh, basis for the activities that, that we do. Uh, two major um, scientific conferences that we are uh, organizing in a biannual rotation. So we just recently uh, completed the Solar World Con Congress 2023, which was hosted in India, uh, and um, um, looking forward to the Eurosun coming in 2024, and then again a new Solar World Congress 2025. So there it goes, and it has been uh, started with the Solar World Congresses in the 70s, uh, and then followed by the Eurosun. And in this way, we get uh, both the global perspectives analyzed and also can tap into the many regional issues that are uh, interesting uh, for developing functional solutions across the globe. Uh, with science, uh, we are also involved in two uh, scientific journals. Um, since uh, our, our first one, which was <clears throat> goes back to 1957 is the Solar Energy Journal. Uh, it is one of the oldest and high quality journals in the field and now has a, a very nice impact factor of 5.7. Um, and we also has it, have its younger sister uh, journal, Solar Energy advances which was launched 2021 as a fully open access journal uh, with a slightly different scope um, and with both of these of course uh, in collaboration with Elsevier uh, publisher. We like to engage in education activities um, where we aside from the scientific um, conferences try to uh, transfer the knowledge uh, in a more easy to digest uh, way uh, and reach a broader 
a community of industrial actors and and other practitioners outside of the academic environment. So we host monthly free webinars uh, and have been doing so for, for quite some time. Uh, here we join with other important uh, organizations such as the solar, the International Solar Heating and Cooling, their solar academy, which you see uh, advertised here. And we also welcome interactions with students, the young ones who will uh, make the 100% renewable happen uh, for the near future, we hope, uh, where we are involved in solar energy master courses, solar speed dating during our conferences, and other higher education initiatives. Um, you can also enjoy easy to understand infographics uh, on solar energy applications, which we try to publish regularly. And recently, our launched Solar Energy Museum, which we hope to be a popular um place for understanding the history but also the future of solar energy and uh, be part of um, creating awareness about how this transformation has happened and how it can continue and with that being said i think we now should move on to the topic of today which is um the solar uh, energy journals award process uh, so every two years the solar energy journal has recognized uh, selected articles in their best paper awards and now also for the first time uh, some of the editors of the year will also be uh, issued an award and here to present these awards we have uh, the journal's editor professor ranga pichumani so I would like to hand over to you, uh, Professor Pichumani, and please, um, this is very exciting. Let's, let us hear about these awards and share in that celebration. Thank you, Victoria. Um, Maybe I should say a few words about you, sorry. I was so eager to hand over, but you can um, present yourself. But yes, Professor Ranga Pichumani is a distinguished George R. Goodson Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Virginia Tech in the US. And as you can see from this short bio, uh, he has served in many leadership roles related to solar energy and um, the advancement of science in this field. He is the author of 275 journals and conference articles and book chapters, etc. And he has, aside from being editor-in-chief of Solar Energy, also served on the editorial board of many other journals and has honors like being a fellow of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers and recipients of awards like the Frank Reith Energy Award and Charles Greeley Abbott Award, Hoyt Clark Hotel Award, and so on. So again, please, uh, lead us into this award ceremony, uh, Professor Ranga Pichumani, and I apologies for skipping your bio. Thank you so much for that introduction. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> let me uh, share my screen. Uh, okay. Yeah, Arabella, how do I uh, do this again? One second, we can. Yep, there you go. <laughs> you see it? Okay. Yeah, All right. it works. Yes. Wonderful. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, can you still see my screen or not yet? Okay, there you go. There you um, go again, yes. Okay, no, it kind of blanked out on me. Uh, no good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on which time zone you're in. I know it's a very international participation. And uh, normally we have this awards ceremony as, as part of the Solar World Congress that just concluded in New Delhi, India a couple of months ago, or maybe last month. Uh, but this year we decided that um, given that everybody may not be able to attend that uh, Congress, we will do it virtually so that we can get everybody uh, in, in this event. So that's kind of a slight shift from what we normally do, but nevertheless, it's a very significant event for the journal, for ISIS, 
and, <coughs> and I'm excited to, uh, to to chair this session. So my name is uh, Ranga Pichumani. I've, uh, I'm the editor for the journal Solar Energy, and I'm also a professor of mechanical engineering at uh, Virginia Tech, and I work in broadly in the area of energy systems, uh, including solar energy and other energy technologies. I uh, direct a laboratory called the Advanced Materials and Technologies Laboratory, where we uh, work at the intersection of materials and energy sciences. So today we have uh, two awards to, to celebrate, and we will start with the first one, which is the Best Paper Awards, and then we will inaugurate a new award that, uh, that we launched this, to just this year on recognizing our uh, wonderful associate editor selected few of them this year. So before that, let me uh, tell you a little bit about the journal. I mean, um, uh, most of you in the audience know the journal quite well. Uh, the journal seeks to publish uh, really top articles, leading articles that significantly advance the science in the field of solar energy. And we are particularly looking for <laughs> new contributions. Can you, can somebody mute themselves other than Okay, <laughs> so we're looking to um, publish articles that have a broader significance to the uh, community in advancing the field. There are the uh, articles are generally in five broad areas, photovoltaic cells and cell physics, concentrating solar power, high temperature systems and photochemistry, solar heating, cooling and buildings integration, solar resources, and uh, recognizing that a lot of the uh, effort is, you know, is going on in integrating solar with the grid and other uh, areas. So we kind of <coughs> uh, put a boundary around say modules and up as uh, what we call systems integration. So it's really solar plus X, so solar plus anything that interfaces with it, including uh, markets, policy aspects, and so forth. So these are the five broad areas in which uh, the journal considers and publishes articles in. It's it's a long-standing journal. It was established in 1957, so we're celebrating our 66th year of uh, publication. Uh, it consists of a wonderful team of editors. We have about 60 editors uh, in all from uh, different parts of the world, and that's something that is really uh, nice about the journal in terms of the diversity of perspectives, diversity of geography, diversity of technologies, and you know, diversity in every sense of the word that is part of this journal. Um, in the last two to three years, on average, we've published about 800, 850 articles per year we, uh, with an acceptance rate of about 20%. So we receive a large number of papers and it's very selective in terms of uh, publication. So, <clears throat> and then the types of publications are of course, full length papers, short communications and review articles. But this year, we also launched a new series of premium articles called Perspectives. And that's really uh, at the invitation of the editorial board. Uh, and it, uh, it's meant to be a leading uh, article. So one of the missions that I envision for the journal is not just to be a forum for communication of your research findings, but also to lead the way in terms of uh, roadmaps, perspectives, visions for where the field should go in the different topic areas. And so with that in mind, we launched this perspective and we are we have a fledgling collection of about five, five or six articles that, uh, that we accumulated this year. And we're looking to grow that in the years to come. And of course, we have the special issues, which we call the progress in solar energy special issues. And these are commissioned in topics uh, of high importance of you know, uh, emerging significance to the field. So a number of different criteria go into the special issue collections. <clears throat> so with that, I want to say a little bit about the uh, first award, set of awards that we will be um, presenting. This is the Solar Energy Journal's Best Paper Awards. And these are awarded biennially every two years. So, um, you know, about to coincide with the Solar World Congress, uh, typically. And uh, the goal is to recognize selected best papers that are published in the preceding two-year time frame, roughly two-year time frame. And uh, as you can see, we uh, publish a lot of articles, and in the two-year time frame, perhaps about 2,000 or so, two to three-year uh, time frame, about 2,500 or so. And with, from there, we are selecting just a handful 
of articles. So it's a very, very selective process. Very, uh, so the recipients are really honored for their uh, high level of contributions. The process works like this. The um, articles are submitted or nominated by the editorial board. So any of those 60 uh, editors can nominate a paper based on what they've handled or what they've read. And ultimately the most difficult task of picking the top few rests in my hands. And it's not an enviable task. There are a number of uh, worthy nominations, but I'm having to choose just a few. So we typically award one or more of these in each of the five subject areas that I mentioned. And uh, you'll see that you know some areas are one, some areas will have two. So without further ado, let's uh, uh, unveil the award recipients for this year. So the first is in the area of photovoltaic cells and cell physics. And this is a paper published in 2021. And the corresponding author is Professor Feng Yan who's now at Arizona State. So what I would like to do is perhaps after each award is called, if the uh, uh, one of the representative authors of the paper could just say a few words in terms of what their paper is about and what's the significance and <coughs> what's the novelty, I think that that would help set the stage for the uh, paper itself. So uh, Professor Yan, would you like to say a few words about your paper? I think you're muted, are you? I cannot hear you, Feng Yang. No. Do you see the green microphone in the top right corner or something like that? You want to but Arabella, it looks like he's unmuted, but we still cannot hear him. Yes, he is unmuted. I think it's a settings issue. Ganga, if you could show us your slides again, and maybe we can move to the next. Okay. So, Feng Yan, if you could check your settings, please. Okay. So let's do that. <coughs> um, the second topic area that uh, I would like to present the best paper award is in the solar heating, cooling, and buildings uh, uh, subject area, and this is a paper. Uh, by a group, uh, uh, Dr. Sharshir and others, and it's on improving the performance of uh, tubular solar still integrated with carbonized wood and carbon black thin film evaporation. So uh, Dr. Sharshir, if you're online, would you like to say a few words? Dr. Shashir. You need to unmute your microphone. It's still muted. To unmute your microphone, click on the microphone symbol, please. Ah, good. Dr. Shashir. Anga, could you go back to your slides, please? Thank you. Okay, yes. Dr. Shashir, can you, can you hear us at all? Perhaps I should have done a mic check for all the authors before. Okay. Again, we may come back to this if you're able to fix. Uh, Dr. Yan, Feng Yan, are you able to um, fix your audio and try speaking? Then we can go back to you. No, not yet.
Okay, might be best to move on to the next category. Okay. I'm sorry, All right. All right, the third best paper award is also in the solar heating pooling buildings uh, topic area. And it's uh, a paper by Osman Jen uh, Jenkel and uh, co-authors, and it's titled Investigation of Physical Mechanical Thermal Properties and Solar Thermal Regulation Performance of Shape-Stable Atapulgai-Based Composite Phase Change Materials in Foam Concrete. So I know he was able to uh, speak prior before this, so I'm hoping that this is a, a success. Can you hear me? Yes, can you speak up a little bit so that um, your voice yeah. is heard? Well, okay, thank you very much uh, uh, all for all the participations. Uh, I would like to give a little information about our topics. Uh, first of all, as authors, we would like to thank the committee for nominating and Professor Ranga for awarding our paper. In our paper, we focused on the development of a new kind of building materials, which has a capability of thermal energy storage. Foam concrete is one of the best wall elements in point of isolation performance, uh, but it does not have any uh, energy storage performance. Thus, we impregnated fast change materials into a supporter media, which is a topo kit, and then we produced foam concrete, and then we uh, characterized several several characteristics were studied. Amount of energy used by buildings is quite high. First, uh, forty percent of that used in the world with the rapid development of urbanization and days spend a large portion of it inside thermoregulations. Main energy source utilized by buildings is fossil based, which is responsible for 28% of the total annual carbon dioxide emissions worldwide, and also causes global warming and thus climate conversions. Improvement in energy efficiency building can be achieved by adding fast change materials into building materials with low thermal conductivity like foam concrete. In this respect, our paper was the worst paper. There are many uh, building materials, cement-based, geopolymer-based. Uh, mostly used one is aerated concrete, but aerated concrete does not contain fast change materials. In this respect, foam concrete is only solution. Our paper presents a new side to the production of building materials in point of zero energy efficiency buildings. Our paper presented that the usage of the foam concrete containing fast change materials in the buildings as well element significantly reduce both the used energy and the carbon dioxide emissions. Our uh, observations uh, show that uh, it, uh, the foam concrete has compressive strength over the limit, which is uh, two and five megapascal. By, by the use of fast change materials in many components of a building, a significant advantage can be achieved in stabilizing the room temperature along with energy and carbon emission saving. It significantly contribute to the uh, it significantly contribute to reduce the global warming. Uh, Professor Ranga, uh, that is uh, all I can say shortly in three minutes for our paper. Finally, That's perfect. I would so finally, I would like to uh, thank my co-authors in this paper for their great effort uh, for all the adventure of this paper. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate that and appreciate your contribution to the journal and uh, good luck with your work going, going forward. Um, do any of the previous um, authors uh, you know, have any uh, 
success with resolving the audio issue. Thank you, Jan. Shashir. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello? Yes. Oh, thank you. So sorry about the technical issue for my head, headphone. So if, if you can, uh, oh yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks for this opportunity and I appreciate, uh, uh, yeah, so yes. Yeah, this work is actually working on the emerging uh, chalcogenide antimanicinine solar cell, which is uh, have a very uh, promising light absorbing as a next generation solar cell, which is uh, prior to replacing the existing commercial cadmium telluride, and also potentially uh, prior to uh, catch up about the perovskite, I mean the highlight perovskite solar cell technology. Uh, since this material is a, a very infant stage, there are a lot of issues needed to be tied to make it a, a, a promising te solar technique. Here in this paper, we're using the uh, inorganic nickel oxide as a whole transport layer to promote the whole carrier extraction and try to deliver about the stable and uh, more efficient uh, device performance. Yeah, so uh, this is the paved way for the future to further engineer about this quantum uh, uh, one-dimensional uh, antimanicinine solar cell technology. And uh, we are really excited about this uh, uh, best paper award and uh, try to uh, further continue uh, working in this area and uh, try to contribute more for the Solar Energy Journal. So uh, thanks for this uh, award. And uh, uh, this is very exciting for both my collaborator and uh, the recent uh, uh, graduate student to continue working in this area. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. And um, thank you for contributing the work to solar energy. And also, we look forward to future contributions. <coughs> thank you. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Sharshir, is, are you able to speak into the phone now? OK. If not, we'll come back and try again. So let's, let's move on. Um, so the next award that I would like to present is actually from the solar systems integration area. And uh, this is a paper by Professor Yilu Liu at uh, University of Tennessee in Knoxville with co-authors. And it's titled Modeling, Testing, and Mitigation of Electromagnetic Pulse on PV Systems. It's a fairly recent publication. Nevertheless, we felt that it was important enough to be included in this year's award. So Professor Liu, uh, would you like to say a few words about your paper? Yeah, I hope you can hear me. And uh, I have actually invited my student to, he's the first author to, to talk instead of myself. So Wei, can you uh, unmute yourself and uh, have your uh, camera on? <clears throat> Well, yes, yes, Toby. Okay, go, go ahead. Yeah, stay, uh, okay. stay short and sweet. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, in this research, we conduct the modeling, testing, and mitigation for the uh, for the impact of the EMP on the PV system. So, basically, the EMP refers to the a short burst of electrical magnetic energy that occurs due to a nuclear explosion related phenomena. And especially, uh, the EMP contains uh, E1, E2, and E3, uh, uh, includes three stages, especially for the E1. Uh, it will cases uh, ex ex extremely high voltage and current into the PV system. And it also will case the equipment damage and some power supply uh, disruptions. So uh, to to verify or to measure this uh, impact, uh, we also developed some the PCI research or some other uh, method to uh, quantify the impact of the EMP to the PV system. And finally, we also uh, summarize some of the typical used methods the, mit the mitigation measures to uh, defense the EMP on a PV system, such as the uh, surge protection devices and EMP filters uh, to uh, decrease the energy of the EMP on the PV system. And uh, we also conduct some of the case, case studies to demonstrate the uh, 
uh, but did it uh, uh, in fact is less of our method so so let's all our so this is what we research in this paper and thanks very far and uh, very, very much to providing this opportunity by the uh, solar energy committee and editors and also thank you so much for all the co-authors and the professor Yigu Liu. yeah thank you so much <coughs> and thank you for that uh, nice description of the paper um, and good luck with your work as you progress on your dissertation uh, the next uh, paper that I would like to recognize is also in the area of solar energy systems integration. And this is uh, a paper published in September 2022. It's titled Techno-Economic Potential and Perspectives of Floating PV in Europe. And uh, I believe uh, Leonardo Shelley is the author representing this paper. So are you able to speak into the microphone? Yeah. Hi, Hi. Professor Chumani. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Welcome. So Thanks to you, thanks to the editorial board, uh, to the International Solar Energy Society for this award. Uh, we are very glad. And in this, um, in this paper, we look at floating photovoltaics, FPV, a uh, solution that is you know, gaining attention because it makes it possible by moving uh, PV modules from land onto water to reduce the land competition that uh, you know our technology is facing because of the growing deployment uh, rates. So what? Uh, so we started from some of the knowledge that have been shared in the literature. These systems are expected to work at lower temperatures because of the cooling effect of water and therefore at higher efficiencies. But uh, you know, we also know that these systems are installed at tilt angles that are never higher than 20 degrees in order to limit the impact of the wind load on the floating system. And you know, this increases the angular and reflection losses, especially at latitudes, at the European latitudes. So what we did was running a, a cost and uh, techno-economic analysis to understand the cost competitiveness of this technology uh, by modeling the performances of floating PV across suitable reservoirs in Europe. We took into account field, uh, you know, uh, field data shared in the literature, uh, realistic economic conditions for each site. And what we found is that um, in the best case scenario, so in case of, uh, you know, confirmed lower temperature and tilt angle of 20 degrees, floating PV is already uh, competitive economically with land-based photovoltaics. However, we also highlight that, you know, if these conditions are not met, if the temperature, as some empirical evidence suggests, um, are not as low as expected, and if the tilt cannot be as high as we model in our best case scenarios, we might have to reduce the installation cost of floating PV by up to 12% to make it uh, cost competitive with land-based photovoltaics. Toward the end of the paper, we show also how these reductions can be done. Uh, nowadays in Europe, for example, mounting and racking costs uh, represent up to 30% uh, of the installation cost of PV systems. So if the economy of scale kicks in, if the cost of floater is lowered, uh, there is room for floating PV to become not only cost competitive with the land-based photovoltaics, but even uh, cheaper than you know the conventional technologies. Thank you so much uh, for the Thank nice you. summary of your work. Um, again, <clears throat> in picking these uh, papers, we try to uh, kind of cover the diversity of um, topics and uh, content. I mean, this is one that is on the techno-economics uh, of a solar energy system, you know, so that's um, representative of, uh, you know, the topics that we would like more contributions in uh, because, you know, the economics governs a lot of the implementation of the technologies. The next area, the next paper that I would write, like to recognize is in this in our solar resources and uh, meteor, uh, metrology uh, subject area. And this is a paper by Andreas Nilsson and co-authors. It's titled Irradiance Net, 
spatiotemporal deep learning model for satellite-derived solar irradiance short-term forecasting that was published uh, about two years ago in November 2021. So Andreas, I, I think you're online, so if you could please explain a couple of words, in a couple of words about your paper, that'll be great. Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Great, awesome. Yeah, so first of all, I would like to thank the, the editorial team of Solar Energy and the ISIS for the recognition of our work in this field. And secondly, I would like to, to recognize my co-author's contribution in this work. So we all know that, that global widespread integration of solar energy into modern electrical power grids actually requires having more accurate solar radiance forecast. Uh, but despite the fact that as an abundance of historical satellite observations, there's only a limited amount of research that's actually investigated the problem of surface-based irradiance forecasting from a purely data-driven perspective. And this is really something that has seen tremendous success in related domains, uh, such as radar and satellite-based precipitation now casting, just to name a few. So in this work, we presented this model called RadianceNet, a novel satellite-based neural network model uh, for spatial-temporal forecasting of surface solar radiance up to four hours into the future in Europe. And we actually demonstrate that by isolating and modeling the stochastic process of solar radiance using these deep learning methods, we can actually obtain superior results compared to current methods in this field for short-term solar radiance forecasting. And we also don't need any post-processing or calibration based on sparse ground-based measurements or other data sources. So we compare, uh, compare our method to the previous state-of-the-art uh, called TVL1 algorithm from the German Weather Institute that we have validated against the uh, ERA-5 reanalysis data and also a satellite-based European SARA 2.1 data set. We also validated the results further against ground-based parameter observations from the baseline surface radiation network, and our conclusions remained unchanged when we also accounted for hourly and uh, monthly seasonality. Finally, we tried applying a simple cloud mask scheme where we can actually demonstrate that our performance improvement arose due to a considerable reduction in cloudy pixel errors. And this really aligned with our initial goal of actually trying to tackle the stochastic element of uh, surface radiance dynamics and forecasting. So RadianceNet has burst several novel and improved contribution in the field since it was published back in 2021. But at the time, if it served as initial evidence that having this purely data-driven perspective might actually better approximate and infer, um, infer future cloud dynamics and their corresponding impact on surface solar radiance than competing methods, at least in the short term. Yeah, so with that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much. And again, it underscores the importance of a lot of the emerging, emerging data-driven techniques uh, in the uh, development of solar, solar energy technologies. Um, again, I want to circle back to Svelam Sharshir. Are you able to resolve your audio issue and say a few words about your paper? Then I can uh, go back to your paper slide. Still, still issues? Okay. All right. We'll keep moving and then hopefully before the end of the presentation, maybe we can get your audio resolved. The next paper is actually uh, in the concentrating solar power uh, subject area. The authors of the paper are in Australia. So as much as we try to coordinate the time that works for several geographical regions of the world, uh, Australia unfortunately fell out of the, <laughs> out of the uh, out of favor because it's now past midnight in Australia. So it's probably you know early morning or something like that. So uh, unfortunately, the author. Uh, of this paper, the lead author of this paper could not join us for this event. But I, this is a paper that was published in July 2022. It's titled A Feasibility Study on the Application of Mesh Grids for Heliostat Wind Load Reduction. So very briefly, the article presents a detailed uh, experimental study on the impact of different designs of mesh grids to reduce wind loads on heliostats, which is one of the uh, major components that contributes to the cost of the solar field in a concentrating solar power system. <clears throat> and the article shows that this approach uh, has great potential in um, introducing the costs of the CSP field. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, and um, perhaps there'll be another occasion when the author can explain to us 
more about that paper. If not, you have the details of the paper to refer to. Again, uh, I, I want to go back to Dr. Sharshir. Is, that, is there any progress on, that you read on the audio? Okay. All right, if not, then I would like to uh, move on to the next set of awards. And I'm actually very excited uh, to introduce these awards because over the years, we've recognized the contributions of the authors um, in the uh, uh, you know in the World Congress or some other medium to to kind of recognize and uh, appreciate their contributions to the journal and the field. And there's a whole ecosystem that goes behind you know the publication. And one of the key gatekeepers of the quality and the success of the journal is the associate editorial team. I mean, they are tireless uh, volunteers. They are very dedicated to the journal, very dedicated to the field, and they do an outstanding job of you know, handling your manuscripts, making sure that the quality is there, handling the review process. And as you know, handling the review process is not uh, easy most of the time because uh, finding the best quality reviews, but also mediating the, the difference of opinions among reviewers, I think they do a fantastic job for the journal and I, the, the success of the journal really owes to that editorial backbone that runs like clockwork. And so <laughs> this year I'm pleased to initiate this award that is a recognition of their tireless uh, work. Now in uh, doing this award, it's really a very hard job because every one of the 60 editor, editors in the team is outstanding. How do you pick a handful from that outstanding set? I mean, that's really the task. And so, what, what, you know, this year I'm pleased to award uh, three associated editor awards, and there'll be more to come in the years to come. But uh, this year, I would like to recognize uh, three of, of my uh, really fantastic associate editorial team. So, let me uh, say a little bit about how the process works. So, again, like I said, it, we are inaugurating these awards in 2023. And it's really in recognition of the dedication and commitment of the associate editors to both promoting the journal and ensuring the high quality of the articles published. I mean, so it's not just a mechanics of processing paper, they're act active champions, active ambassadors of the journal, <coughs> trying to solicit the best contributions, the best people to, to be engaged with the journal. So the journal recognizes that the uh, uh, overseeing the scientific uh, review process in a timely manner, I won't underscore that, takes significant effort and coordination. And therefore the journal recognizes uh, annually one or more associate editors with the Associate Editor of the Year Award. And the, the, the associate editors are basically nominated by subject editors of the, of the five subject areas. And, uh, and I, I, I make the final selection as editor in chief. So this year, I'm really delighted to present uh, three awards. The first one is in, the, in, in no particular order. I mean, it, I just uh, put these slides together. And the first one is in the area of solar heating and cooling and buildings. And I'm really delighted to uh, present the associate editor of the award, year award to Dr. Ana Laura Pisello. She's a Professor of Environmental Applied Physics at the University of Perugia in Italy, where she founded the Environmental Applied Physics Lab. She's also been a visiting researcher at several universities in the US, including Princeton, Columbia, my own uh, institution, Virginia Tech, and City University of New York. She's an author of more than 150 uh, international referee journal publications and holds uh, several patents in the area of microclimate monitoring systems, new materials for radiative cooling and photoluminescence. She's won many awards, including uh, and European projects under the framework of the Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe program, including one Europe Research Council grant about radiative cooling for urban heat mitigation. And she was the first and the only Italian scientist in the field of environmental industrial physics in that uh, project. She's an associate editor for solar energy, of course. And in addition to that, she is an editor for energy in buildings and nature scientific reports and other um, journals. So again, it's my real pleasure to, to announce this award to Dr. Pisello. And if you want to speak a few words, the floor is yours. Congratulations. 
Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you hear me. Yes. Okay, good. So good morning, good afternoon, good uh, evening probably. Um, thank you. I, I really would like to thank um, Professor Rangapa Chuami, of course, for the leading role uh, from a scientific and technical point of view of the journal itself. And then of course, also the topic editor uh, that probably um, has highlighted my, my role in, in the journal and as well as the um, ISIS, uh, as a um, inspiring organization, really linking uh, a variety of um, research topics around solar energy. I just want to, to say a very few words about um, thanking you and also about the fact that when we think about solar energy in general, we always have in mind application of active systems, producing solar energy, as of course, by means of a variety of methods and so on. Uh, since I typically handle those papers involved in the energy efficiency in buildings applications or solar energy per se applied over building envelopes or the built environment issues, um, you know, I just want to point out the importance of having a solar energy consideration out of these uh, passive, 90% passive um, problems that many papers uh, try to address thanks to their, of course, uh, commitment to solar energy in general, uh, that in any case represent probably uh, interesting and inspiring contributions that the journal Solar Energy, of course, takes into account. Since I'm mostly involved in this kind of research, it's always nice to point this out in order to start from the efficiency first and then, uh, uh, of course, to, uh, to deal with the uh, action uh, plan of uh, renewable energy production via solar energy exploitation. So I just wish to really thank all of you for this recognition, which is very much appreciated. Thank you, Anna Lara. I appreciate that. <laughs> and congratulations again and keep up the great work. Thank you. The uh, second uh, ed associate editor I would like to, like to recognize this year is uh, Dr. Robert Pitzpal from DLR, Germany. Uh, Robert has been an associate editor for the journal for many years and, uh, you know, he's um, been a very uh, cheerful and <laughs> dedicated contributor. I mean, I, I know this is a subject area that I'm most familiar with because I was a subject editor before I took on the editor-in-chief role. And, you know, there are times when subject editors are faced with uh, finding associate editors to handle an extra paper that may come on top of the regular load that they're assigned. Uh, and so Robert has always been uh, really uh, accommodating in any papers that I've sent him. So uh, again, uh, all of my associate editors are extremely dedicated and this is one example of the dedication of the team. So Dr. Pitzpal is one of the two directors of DLR Solar Research Institute. It's the largest research institution in Germany working in the field of CSP, uh, concentrating solar technologies. And his position is jointly assigned with a professorship at Aachen University. His main research areas are the technical analysis and optimization of CSP systems for generating electricity and producing fuel. There are many innovations from his lab and his institute that, are, that can be found in commercial installations today. Dr. Pitzpal serves as the associate editor for solar energy as he has served as the chairman of the Solar Cases Technology Cooperation Program of the IEA from 2017 to 21. Is also a member of the board of the German Industry Association of CSP and of the European Industry Association, Estella. Dr. Pitzball received the Farrington Daniels Award of the uh, International Energy Society in 2017 and the Frank Preet Energy Award of ASME in 2020. Robert, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, thank you very much, Ranga. I very much appreciated that. And uh, I was just thinking what to say in this situation. And it came to my mind that, well, how can we actually work and improve uh, the activities of our editorial team and also of our authors here? And I was thinking whether, let's say, artificial intelligence tools may help us in the future and maybe we can encourage also the publisher to support us here. Because in many papers, we are sometimes struggling a bit with the language of authors, so artificial intelligence is very smart today and can do a lot of these kind of corrections. 
and sometimes we also suffering on let's say not um, having reflected well enough the state of the art uh, in recent papers and publications and also here AI can probably do a good contribution so in all of that we would on the one hand side help our reviewers and the our editors and not spending too much time in checking all these kind of details and on the other hand also help the authors to uh, provide already a, a much better uh, paper a concept uh, to the journal and maybe this uh, is an idea that can be followed up and and uh, I'm happy if uh, this can contribute to uh, improving and, and accelerating uh, uh, the quality of the journal and also the, the the timeline in publication so with that thanks a lot yeah that's a great suggestion again <laughs> you know, the, these are technologies that are evolving uh, with some you know quality control issues so I think as we uh, resolve them as those get resolved uh, I think Elsevier is is actively looking into uh, including some of these uh, tools as part of the publication process but but that's a good point I think it's uh, something that we should look into uh, to Im improve and streamline our operations to the betterment of the journal uh, it's a great, great suggestion. We'll follow up on that. Thank you so much. And again, uh, congratulations on the award and thank you for your contributions to the journal. The third uh, uh, award that uh, associated with the year award uh, goes to Dr. Lingamalu Giribabu. He is with, uh, he's a senior scientist at the CSIR, uh, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology in, in India. And this award is in recognition of his work in the photovoltaic cells and cell physics uh, subject area. Dr. Giri Babu is a senior scientist, as I said, as the, at the CSIR. He's also a professor in the Academy of Scientific and Innovation Research. His expertise is in the design and development of low cost materials. It includes sensitizers, redox couples, electrode materials, semiconducting metal oxides, whole transport materials for disensitized solar cells and perovskite solar cells. This group also works on donor acceptor systems based pigment molecules for biomimicking of natural photosynthesis, nonlinear optical properties, as well as sensitizers for photodynamic therapy. He's a recipient of several awards that includes the Materials Research Society Award. He's a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry and a fellow of the Luminescence Society of India. He has published extensively over 250 research articles. He's an inventor in seven patents and has published six book chapters. And Dr. Bala Babu, congratulations. And you know, if you have a few words to say, we'll, uh, the floor yeah. is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor uh, Ranga Pichmani. Uh, did you hear my voice? Absolutely. Uh, I am uh, very much delighted about uh, uh, nominating me this award in 2023 uh, and the uh, award is initiated in this year. When I was informed in my uh, institute, uh, everybody felt very happy and uh, uh, it increases my responsibility of associateship in solar energy further uh, and uh, I took uh, uh, associateship uh, in 2017. Uh, so. I'm the, probably I'm the first person from India uh, in this uh, editorial board of solar energy and by that time I'm trying to uh, uh, advertise and publicize uh, uh, in uh, southern part of India and part of northern part of uh, uh, India and uh, that may be the uh, one of the reason uh, and these years the uh, manuscripts uh, from India are coming to this journal more and more and uh, uh, my journey is started with this uh, uh, journal in 2009 where I published the first research article in this journal and I your comments they made very constructively and uh, since then at least one publication I'm trying to publish in this journal and my associate editor started in 2017 and uh, uh, while uh, reviewing while reading the uh, reviewer comments uh, I myself expand knowledge in other areas of uh, uh, photovoltaics and uh, 
therefore i am very very thankful to the solar energy for giving the um, opportunity to improve my knowledge in this uh, solar energy research activities and definitely with this uh, uh, award uh, I, my energy has enhanced and def i will uh, work more efficiently than previously i am very thankful to professor ranga kuchmani the chief editor of the journal thank you dr giri babu <coughs> appreciate those words and uh, we value your contributions and look forward to more so congratulations to all the uh, award recipients um, as you can see uh, you know the associate editors are uh, scholars themselves very active researchers themselves and they're volunteering their time to the journal is really a privilege for the journal so um, with that I uh, you know we conclude the awards in in an actual award ceremony perhaps there will be allowed uh, applause that will you know follow each of these awards but we'll just send virtual applauses to each of the recipients uh, in today's award ceremony I just want to close this with a few thoughts I mean the journal uh, is, is a dynamic entity I mean it's always evolving it's always looking to improve and we are seeking we are always seeking the engagement of the community with the journal in multiple ways and you know like we have seen today you know these uh, seven um, selected uh, best paper awards it's just a small sliver a small fraction of the the papers that we publish it's less than a quarter percent or so of the paper so you should be really proud of uh, being recognized for your work as an author and i invite you all to kind of contribute or continue to contribute your high impact uh, research to the journal as, in, as, as an author I would also uh, invite you to contribute your scientific expertise as critical technical reviewer. We are always looking for uh, uh, technical reviewers who can really uh, critique a manuscript or a submission in a constructive way to improve it, to raise the quality of the journal. Our acceptance is, is uh, about 20%. We are very selective in what we publish and a lot of that goes to the reviewers' comments. So please consider engaging with the journal in that role as well and you know the uh, we are also uh, always looking to grow the editorial board I mean there's always uh, you know uh, as you can see the editor editors are also high profile uh, professionals themselves so they take on higher roles like they become deans or they become provosts of universities you know we're really proud of their progress in their career but then as they move up the ranks their time commitment to the journal decreases. So we're always looking to expand the editorial board. Plus, we're also uh, trying to bring in new areas, like Robert mentioned, I mean, AI and machine learning is an area that is really uh, trying to impact a number of fields, solar energy included. So there are uh, there's always uh, room for more uh, topical uh, inclusions in the journal's portfolio. So if you are, if you know established researchers, if you are an established researcher uh, or a practitioner, you may be uh, interested in an associate editor position, you know, please contact me. And more importantly, be an ambassador. I mean, you engage professionals in your own network who may not have published in solar and energy to contribute to the journal. I mean, back in when I was in the Department of Energy, and even now I keep saying that there is no such thing as a solar energy community. It's a truly multidisciplinary problem. It brings in uh, expertise from very diverse fields. So I'm really always looking to expand on that. With the introduction of the solar energy systems integration, we are trying to expand into the uh, electrical engineering power grid community, which may not have traditionally published in solar energy, but may perhaps in IEEE journals, but we welcome contributions from that and other areas. And finally, we are looking to enrich the diversity of the journal in every single uh, way that the, wor the word embodies geographical diversity, technical diversity, uh, early mid-career, you know, established career uh, uh, folks and uh, involvement in the journal, gender diversity, and so forth. So please uh, con uh, continue to engage with the journal and help the journal grow. And finally, I'll be remiss if I uh, do not thank the people who have worked really hard for the journal, uh, you know, throughout the year and for this event also. Arabella has been instrumental in putting this together. She handled all the logistics, all the communications with each of you so that things would go flawlessly today as it did. 
<coughs> so thank you, Arabella, for your initiative, for your support in this event, and also you know, I, the support of ISIS uh, in, in, in the journal. Uh, Dana Nikulescu is a senior publisher of energy journals at Elsevier. Again, these are people behind the scenes whom you may not interact with, but the success of the journal owes a lot to their uh, very uh, hard work and efficient work for the journal. And finally, Vaishali Subramanian, you, uh, you may not have seen that name, but she's the workhorse behind uh, the production team. Now, when your manuscript gets accepted and when, when it goes to production, she's the person who oversees that everything goes smoothly and very quickly and in a timely manner to get your papers out. So with that, I want to, again, congratulate each and every one of you. I want to uh, want you to enjoy the award because you know it's a very selective uh, set of awards. And I want to uh, invite you to continue to be engaged with the journal in multiple ways. Thank you so much and uh, have a great holidays that are coming up and a very happy new year to you all. Thank you. I'll turn it back to you, Arabella, if you have anything to close with. Yes, thank you very much, Ranga, for taking us through the ceremony, for presenting us uh, the winners. Um, I'd like to hand over to Victoria for some concluding remarks. And also from my side, a big thank you to everybody. Yes, thank you. Um, I agree uh, with you, Arabella. Thanks a lot, uh, Ranga. Uh, I think it's fantastic that now also editors uh, are getting the well-deserved well recognition. Um, it's a very nice uh, addition to also uh, highlighting these uh, nice, extraordinary uh, journal comp contributions through the Best Paper Awards. So thank you very much for that addition. And uh, yeah, I, I find um, all of the paper contributions super intriguing. And I think I will pick some of the journal issues back up again and browse through them again. But I'm sure we will be highlighting these um, uh, articles also somehow on the ISIS web, Arabella. Yes, of With course. We will. Um, things like that. Yes, we will have a, a little article written up and it's going to highlight each of the individual uh, best papers that won. It's also going to highlight each of the associate editors. And I've seen that question in the chat as well. There will be links to each of the papers so people can do what Victoria is going to do now. Go back to the journal and browse. And yeah, see. I know. You get to <laughs> read up on it again. So thanks exactly, a lot. Yeah. I like yeah. Um, okay. Very nice work for the whole solar energy team, including all the authors, including all the editors, and including you, Ranga, and the uh, Elsevier team. So thank you on behalf of ISIS for that. Thank you very much. And uh, Arabella will be in touch with each of you <coughs> for any follow-up uh, information. Uh, we are planning on a you know small token of appreciation with certificates and so forth. So she'll be in touch with you on on that. But uh, but really, I mean, my heartiest congratulations to all of you and thank you for supporting the journal. Appreciate that very much. Great. Right. So I guess with that, we go ahead and close this ceremony. Uh, okay. And thank you for participating. Thank you. Yes, thank Again. you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.